Let's take a look at the fats that our cells use as a form of long-term energy storage and the phospholipids that make up the basic structure of membranes. While these are not polymers in the strictest sense of the term, and they're not macromolecules either, their metabolism is based on condensation and hydrolysis reaction. That's why they're included in this discussion. Shown here is the structural formula of the fatty acid. The linkage of three fatty acids to the three carbons of a molecule of glycerol in a condensation or water removal reaction makes a triglyceride. Triglycerides are commonly known as fats. The linkage between each fatty acid and the glycerol molecule is called the ester linkage, and the entire molecule again is a triglyceride. If some of the fatty acids in a triglyceride contain double bonded carbons, they will have kinks or twists along their length, making for a bulkier fat molecule here. Fatty acids play important roles in the structure of membranes, and we'll see that in greater detail shortly. The illustration on the left emphasizes the charged phosphate end, and therefore the hydrophilic head of a phospholipid, as well as the two uncharged or hydrophobic fatty acid tails. The tendency of the hydrophobic tails to aggregate together and exclude water can result in the formation of the phospholipid bilayer characteristic of cellular membranes. As you can see, the hydrophilic or water-loving phosphate heads face the aqueous cytoplasm and the exterior of the cell. An ester linkage again connects two of the fatty acids as well as the polar phosphate to the glycerol molecule. Now, although cells will synthesize new membranes in a highly regulated series of steps, it's actually possible to mix phospholipids and water under conditions where they'll spontaneously form a phospholipid bilayer. Now what does this tell you about the formation of membranes in cells?